And mum being, a, she studied naturopathic medicine. Is that right? And so I guess that pl plays into some of the stuff that comes back later in the story, but did she uh, sort of, you know, talk about that stuff as young, you know, when you're younger and, you know, to teach you about food and things? Yeah. She was always giving us like fish oils around exam time for our brain. Um, she was always like, she'd cut pieces of our hair and send them off to see if we were vitamin deficient. <laughs> uh, she was really, like, she's really spiritual and really into nutrition. So anything that could help us, she would be doing. So making us fish and vegetables and we'd be like, oh, we want pizza. Um, she'd be like, no, this is good for this and this. So she hadn't studied in it yet, but she was always fascinated uh. about what we put in our body and how it has an effect. And you know, she always said to me, you know, if you eat this, egg in the morning then you'll win your cross-country race and I was like okay and I remember thinking I'm gonna win because I got this that's egg. so cool <laughs> yeah. that's very cool positive reinforcement there sure. yeah I met, I met I met your mom at the uh we did our final um what did, I guess when you call it like uh, cook or what did we do we we you know we cook for like 20 yes. people or something didn't we and your mom was there and uh, she's such a lovely lady I can you know, I can just see where you get all your, you know, your kind heartedness and your big smile and stuff from. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's lovely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So Camille, you mentioned a little moment ago about, you know, some a group of uh, girls being a little bit tough and that kind of thing. But, um, I, you know, when you, were, you mentioned that when you were around 13 or so, you remember sort of hiding your eczema from your classmates and, um, your hands were often like really sore and they were even just like typing were it's like painful from the eczema. Yeah. Uh, you'd even wear gloves, which would give you some comfort, but, uh, and also more than that, it would sort of prevent people seeing your hands. Um, what was uh, sort of the reaction at school and, and how did, how did the other kids uh, treat you at school? Um, yeah, so I did cover up my hands with the ex because of the eczema and it was especially either in computer class because your hands are on show like other classes it would be fine but I think it's because computer class your hand like everyone's hands are out um so I was like oh my goodness I don't want people to see my hands and then it was as well in netball I wanted to wear gloves because it hurt and I didn't want people to see my hands as well um but both times I wasn't allowed to wear them so I'd get shouted at, take them off, and I'll never forget the time that I took them off. And the guy sat next to me, which was one of my friends, he was like, oh my gosh, what's happened to your hands? Like, mm -hmm. And he thought I was self-harming mm -hmm. and because there was just scratches everywhere. And I was like, no, 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 like I'm fine. And he was like, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not. And I was like, I am, I just have this thing. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what thing? And I was like, I don't know. I just scratch when I sleep. <laughs> and he was like, that doesn't make sense. And I was like, I know it doesn't make sense to me either. And it just like, it really upset me because I just felt like I can't even explain. Like, I felt like I was crazy. You know, I had this thing that nobody else understood and I didn't understand, but it was making me scratch every night. Yeah. Well, I must say you're, you're an extremely uh, strong lady, that's for sure. And like, overcoming all of that, is, you know, is, is extremely tough, especially when you're so young. Um, but, but also talking about schools and stuff. And um, I know that you, you had like a couple of fresh starts. Um, like you mentioned earlier, you went to different schools and you had a, a fresh start uh, by going to a new private school. Yeah. Um, which I guess must have been good, but then also other things that sort of started happening as like, you know, you became more aware of uh, what was good for you in terms of your X Men stuff. I know that you you mentioned uh, you had an allergy test um, at one point, and then as part of like that, when you went to the new school, you kind of changed your diet as a result as well. Is that the kind of right sequence of how it happened? Or yes, so this was the boarding school that I went to, which I was like so happy about new start. Everyone was so nice and it was like three quarter boys to girls. So I felt like there just couldn't be any bitchiness because it was like quite a laddish kind of mentality. Um, and yeah, so when I went there, I was like, okay, in the evenings, people are going to see me because I'm it's boarding school, I'm staying over. So whereas at my old schools, I'd go home and I'd have my eczema cream and my bandages I was like, oh no, I can't have that at this school. Like I have to have clear skin. Like I don't want anyone to see the person that I used to hide. 
so that's when I was, you know, I was older, I was a bit wiser and I said to my mum, I need to find out something, why this is happening to me. Like this isn't just something that I'm going to live with. It's happening to me. So she was like, okay, we'll get the allergy test done. And that's when I found out I was gluten intolerant, um, dairy intolerant. And then a list of other foods came up like tomatoes, lettuce, like things you wouldn't even think. Mm. So I was like, okay, brilliant. So glad that I know that I'm going to avoid everything on that list and I'm going to be glowing. Uh, and I'm quite a determined person. So when, some, <laughs> when I want to do something, I will do it. So I gave that list to the, um, the kitchen people at school and said, I can't eat any of those. I think they just put it to the side. They were like, the scales on one. Um, and yeah, I just made sure I didn't touch any of that food. So if it was served to us, I would ignore it. And my meals would probably be, in the morning I'd have a banana because it would either be continental or like full English. So I was like, oh, don't know what, what's in there. So I'd just have a banana. And then for lunch, I would have um, like a jacket potato with something or like chicken and veg. And then for dinner, always the dinners, I was like, they just, well, because we had foreigners, we'd always do different types of cultured food. Mm. So I was just like, I'll avoid dinner and I'll just have peas. Like literally mm. every dinner, I just have a bowl of peas because I was like, there's more nutrition in this bowl of peas than whatever's in there. Um, so I did this for like, a good like two years of being at school and wow. my skin was glowing I was still able to like drink alcohol even though I was underage but yeah we did drink alcohol <laughs> um and yeah my skin was glowing but I was wow. really really happy at that school I had an amazing group of friends I was netball captain I was doing well in my like subjects at school and everyone was really really kind and friendly and I just mm was so I think yeah I was just so happy there so this, there wasn't much stress <laughs> just uh, just totally the, glowing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just a side uh, side question uh, do you still like peas <laughs> yeah I do <laughs> I do like peas but not a bowl like <laughs> I look back I'm like what I remember people going what are you eating and I'd be like po don't question me you're having pizza yeah. i'm having pizza <laughs> would you put some gravy on there at least come on <laughs> no <laughs> oh, wow. absolutely crazy yeah wow. you know i don't regret the experience that i've gone through though because like like i said back then like why me i'm a good person i've not done anything wrong like i tried to question my whole character i was like okay like you wanted to be a model maybe you were struggling with vanity and you need to realize that beauty is skin deep for me like I questioned everything about myself and was like no I'm a good person like seriously why are you doing this and like now I look back and I'm like okay Camille you were given that challenge because you were strong enough to deal with it and there's so many other people in the world suffering that by you going through that you were able to learn the tools that are going to benefit someone's life now and I like to believe that I had to go through that. That has given me a purpose and wisdom that is going to help millions of people that are suffering in silence. Mm. Um, and it's, yeah. So like when I hit rock bottom and went into hospital and my face went double the size, I'd not seen my friends in ages, I isolated myself. Mm. I remember thinking back then, I don't want to exist anymore. Like I've hit, like rock bottom too many times look at me I can't even look at myself I don't want to exist like I don't want to exist and that I yeah it was just like a black hole couldn't see anything else um mm. and then went into hospital they said you know there's nothing we can do I was showing them pictures of me with glowing skin I was like that's me <laughs> this isn't me help me <laughs> Yeah. Help me get back to me, you know, because I think people, they see you sometimes and they think that's how you are. And here's like a pill or right. a tablet. And I was like, no, this isn't me. I'm in so much pain. Da, 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 da. And they said, we're really sorry, Camille. You're an adult now. You've not grown out of the condition. And the best we can do is give you steroids and antidepressants to cope with it. Wow. And I just remember like, it was like, I couldn't hear any noise around me anymore. I just looked at the hospital and it was like, I'd just been given like a death sentence. I was just like, I, and I was alone there. I was with someone that I was working for because everyone else was out. And I just remember thinking like, 
like I had no words. I was done. I was completely and utterly done. Wow. Uh, Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold, my 